There you are. All right. Okay. So square root 49, nice square number. Uh, 7 squared is 49, so the square root of 49 is 7. So pretty easy when it's good numbers like that. 64, good number, right? 8 the answer to that one. Really easy stuff. Well, what if it's uh, a fraction? Square root of 4 over 9. That's where we, we tend to start falling apart. Yeah, that's right. Length is take square root of both of them. So square root of 4 is... 2 and the square root of 9 is 3, so the answer is 2 thirds. So, exactly right. Split it apart, it's square root of the top, square root of the bottom. Work it out real nice. Um, do one more fractions. Number 4. Square root of 36 over 121. 6 on the top, 11 on the bottom. 6 over 11. Okay. So real nice and easy when they're nice square numbers. But what if they're not nice square numbers? How do we take, uh, for example, the square root of 20? What is that exactly equal to? You can find out uh, square root of 20 square root of 20. I could get an estimate about what it would be, but we want to get exactly what it is. So... Uh, not a bad idea. Good, good number sense there. That the square root above it would be the square root of 25. The square root below it would be the square root of 16. So we know it's somewhere between 4 and 5. But we want to get exactly that. Y'all remember doing this now for 1? Okay. So if we take out, what, what two numbers would you use for 20? 4 and 5. Why would you use 4 and not 10? Yeah, because 4 has a square root. So you could use by dividing by square numbers. That works uh, fine. If you learn doing it that way, that's fine. Uh, so what he's saying is, oh, this is actually 4 times 5, and then what's the square root of 4, and then the square root of 5. We don't know the square root of 5, but we know the square root of 4 is 2. So this is what it ends up being. Now, that's one way of doing it. That's not how I usually teach to do it, so I'm going to show you how I, I like to do these. If you do it that way and you think in terms of square numbers, that's fine. The only problem with that is that you've got to know every square number that exists and always pick the biggest one that goes into a number. That works, but you end up stabbing at it a little bit and trying to figure out which one uh, is the biggest square number that goes into a number. So the way that I do that is I do a factor tree for 20. What are two numbers that multiply to be 20? I think about 10 and 2. What multiplies to be 10? 5 and 2. And these are the prime numbers at the ends, right? Y'all remember doing factor trees in elementary school? Probably been a long time since you did that. Uh, but then, because we're doing square roots, we look for sets of 2. There's a set of two twos right there, right? That's the 2 that's on the outside. This 5 here that doesn't have a buddy... That's the five that's on the inside. That's where that's coming from. I like to do the factor tree method. So the ones we, uh, that I do, that's how I'm going to show it. If you do it the other way, you did that in Coach Max's class. I think that's how he does it with dividing by squares. And you get them right, that's fine. Keep doing it that way. You don't have to change what you do. But uh, if you're struggling a little bit with it or you maybe like this way better, that's great. Uh, the reason I like this way better is because later on in Algebra 2, we're going to do cube roots and fourth roots and fifth roots. And with square roots, you look for sets of two. For cube roots, what do you think you'd look for? Sets of three. Fourth roots, you'd look for sets of four. So the factor tree method can help you there. Instead of having to me memorize all of the square numbers and then memorize all of the cubic numbers and then memorize all the quartic numbers or numbers of the fourth power. So I, that's why I like the factor tree method a little bit better. Uh, but it's not the only way. There are several ways to do these. Uh, so as long as you're getting them the right way without a, an app on your phone or calculator, I'm good with it. Let's take, for example, the number 112. What do we know about 112 just right off the bat? It's 6 times 2. We know it's even, so it's easy to divide by 2. 2 is not a square number, though, right? 
So I like the factor tree method because I don't have to know if a square number goes into it. I just got to know a little bit about it. By knowing that it's even and two goes into it, now I've broke it down into a number, two numbers that are easy to work with. 56, I know something about, right? What do we know it multiplies to be 56? 28 and 2 or 7 and 8 is the, norm, is the way most of us uh, remember multiplication tables. Are. Either way, whether you do an 8 and a 7 or a 28 and 2 on the next factor tree, it doesn't matter. It's going to end up the same. The 8 breaks down into 4 and 2, 2 and 2 there. Then we look for sets of 2. There's a pair of 2s. These two together, that's a pair of twos. This seven doesn't have a buddy. So it goes back on the inside. And then how many twos come to the outside? Two of them. One representative for each set of two. Okay. One, two, that one. And this pair is represented by that one. Then we just multiply those together. Four radical seven. And now... When I look at 112, I don't think automatically that 16 goes into it. But that's really the biggest square that would have went into 112. Now, if you think that way, great. Go for it. Keep, keep doing it that way. That's fine. You're going to get the right answers as well. But I don't think <coughs> in numbers that large. Number uh, seven. Number seven. I'm skipping a few examples so I can get through everything before football has to leave. So, but not skipping any skills. Just give extra examples. All right, 245. What do we know about it? Five can go into it. Five's not a square number, but that really doesn't matter if I'm doing it this way. How many times does five go into 45 or 245? 49 times. Hey, we stumbled into a square number. We know 49 is seven and seven. So what would be the simplified form of that one? Seven radical five. The pair of sevens is the seven on the outside. The five that doesn't have a buddy is the five that's on the inside. Okay, so simplifying those square roots, uh, essential skill to getting the exact answer out of that. Um, what if there is a number that's already on the outside? For example, five radical 72. We got a simplified 72. The 5 that's on the outside is just it's there. We just got to use it later. So let's simplify the 72. Uh, what goes into 72? 36 and 2. I'm th I was thinking 9 and 8. Just because that's. And that's 3 and 3. And 8 would be 2 and 4. 2 and 2. So we got a pair of 3s, a pair of 2s. And then that two that's right there is going to be left inside, right? So what all is on the outside of that square root? The the three, the two, and the five, all of those. So I'm going to write through two times three times five, which ends up being 30 square root of two. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, either way you do that, you're still going to get the same thing. Yeah, if you put a six out there in the five, it's the same. If you do the square numbers thing, you're going to get the same answer. We should get the same answer no matter what, no matter which method we use to solve that. All right, let's do one more of those, and then we'll go on to actually uh, doing some solving using this. Number nine, three radical 578. And this is where I think the, the square number thing kind of started falling apart for me. For me, it does anyway. You might be better at night. I'm sure you are. Yeah. Crazy. What do I know about 578? It's even. It's even. It's about all I know about it. It's a pretty big number. I like to have that many dollars to go blow this weekend. That'd be fun. I don't have that many dollars. Uh, but I can break that down with an e with it being even using the factor tree. Now, when I do that, I get a 2, and I don't know how many times does 2 go into 578. That would be 289. Now, 289, what do we know about it? Let's see. 2 plus 8 is 10 plus 9 is 
19. So it's not divisible by 3 or 9 or 16. So I don't know much about it. Uh, I happen to think, man, yeah, what's the square root of 289? I'm, I don't know el anything else about it. Hey, it happens to have a nice square root. So it is a square number that the square root of is 17. So that's really 17 and 17. So on the outside, we've got the three that was already there and the 17 and then a two left over. So that's 51 square root of two, 51 radical two. So a lot of times it's a, if it's a weird number like that and you don't know much about it, try taking the square root of it and see if it's a square number. It might be. That one's one of those. Because a lot of times we don't memorize our, our square numbers up to as high as probably you know we might need. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's let's actually do some solving uh, with this kind of uh, radical to deal with. So we're going to solve by square roots. And when we're solving by square roots, if we're trying to employ that method, we need to get the squared part by itself first. That's the first thing we've got to do. Then we can take square roots, okay? We'll get the squared part by itself, take the square root. And in parentheses, I'm going to put plus or minus. Plus minus there, because you got to remember to have that in your problem when you work. Anytime you bring the square root into the problem, you got to put a plus or minus in front of it. If it was there in the original problem, that doesn't happen. But it's when you put it in there, you're using it as an operation. The reason you need the plus and minus is because let's think about an easy number like 49. That was our first example. What numbers squared technically give us 49? Seven times seven, but what about negative seven times negative seven in that 49 as well? So it could be a positive seven that's the square root of 49, or it could be the negative seven that's the square root of 49. And you remember uh, when we were solving quadratics by factoring, how many answers did we get every single time? Two. Even if it was the same answer, it counted how many times? Twice. Okay. So when you're doing a quadratic, you're going to get two answers. Maybe the same answer twice, but here, the only way to get two answers using the square roots is the plus or minus. It's got to be in there. If you don't have that, you're, you're going to miss half of the answers because you won't have that. All right, so let's look at an easy one to start off with. Number 10. X squared is equal to 64. Real, real easy to start with. Is the squared part by itself? Yeah, the, the squared part's the X squared, right? So it's by itself. Now I can take the square root of both sides. I put a plus or minus in the side that the number's on. Okay? When you take the square root of x squared, what do you get? X. What's the square root of 64? 8. Plus or minus 8. So you get two answers. You get positive 8 as an answer, and you get negative 8 as an answer. This problem could have been done by factoring. And we'd have got the same answers. If you'd have got it equal to zero and had x squared minus 64 equals zero, that's a difference of squares. X and eight. And the factors would be x plus eight, x minus eight. Y'all remember doing difference of squares yesterday. Uh, and then you're, you'd solve those. You get the same answers. So solving by square roots can also be done by factoring. Which one looks quicker? That one, it, it, it was one step, right? And we worked it out. This one took thinking about it. it. It really wasn't that big a deal, but that worked pretty good to do it that way. So I, I think solving by square roots might be uh, pretty nice. But what if it's something like this? that look like something that we could solve by square roots? Well, not at the moment, but what's the first step, <laughs> excuse me, in solving by square roots? 
get the squared part by itself. So we need to get that x squared isolated. So we need to move everything else. So what do we move first? Subtract 8. That's an easy thing to do. So 7x squared is equal to 7. Is the squared part by itself yet? Yeah, we need to divide by 7 first. It's not completely by itself. So that's 1. And then this is super easy because I'll just take the square root of both sides. What's the square root of 1? 1. And because it was in an equation and we made the square root happen, it's plus or minus 1. So you get positive one as an answer and negative one as an answer. So 11 could have been done by factoring as well, but I'll tell you 12 cannot. Or I put 13 in there. I said 12 in my head. I guess I counted to the next one. Number example 12 cannot be done by factoring. It has to be done by square root sort. That's the method we're using today. And there's other methods that we're going to learn at the fall break. 2x squared minus 9 is equal to 55. So we're going to solve that by square root. So first step would be what? Add 9. And we add 9 to 55, we get 64, which is a nice square number, but the squared part's not by itself, is it? I got to divide by 2 first. And I get x squared is equal to 32, which is not a square number. So here, what do I do next? Take the square roots of both sides, plus or minus, and then I need to break down the 32 using whichever way you do that. If you do that with 16 times 2 and the square root of 16 is 4, so you get 4 radical 2, that's fine. If you do factor tree, I'm thinking 8 times 4, 4 times 2, 2 and 2, 2 and 2, 1, 2 pairs of 2s. So that's plus or minus 4, and then this 2 is left over. So there's a simplifying radicals thrown in there with solving by square roots. Any questions about these three so far? Because this is kind of the basis of the next thing we do, too. Questions about those? All right. Cake. Okay. 4 minus 3x squared is equal to negative 77. All right, what do we do first? Subtract 4. So negative 3x squared is equal to negative 81, which looks nice, but it's maybe not. What do we do next? Negative 3. Yeah, well, don't forget your sign there. So x squared is equal to... 27, and now it's a positive 27, right? Because you had negative divided by negative. So that gets us a positive 27, and now we do what? Break down the 27 because we're taking the square root of that on both sides. So that'd be 9 times 3. Yeah, 9 is a 3 and 3. So we got a pair of 3s. That's 3 radical 3, plus or minus in the front. Boom. Not bad, easy to solve. It's just we're getting exact solutions, not decimal approximations for that. So, uh, you know, if you were asked to get a decimal approximation, you know, just take the square root of 27 and get the take calculated from the decimal. Uh, but we're getting exact answers because those are better. Everybody's favorite? Let's throw some fractions in there. And see if we can uh, get our way out of that. What we do first? Subtract one. 
get a negative 1 half x squared is equal to negative 40. Multiply by the reciprocal, which is negative 2. x squared equals positive 80. And we take the square roots. And just break down 80. 40 and 2, 4 and 10, 2 and 2, 5 and 2. So we got a pair of twos, another pair of twos. So that's going to be what? 4 radical 5. Good job. And plus or minus in front of it. Don't forget the plus or minus. If you don't put the plus or minus in there, you're missing half the answer. Okay, because you're only showing the positive side of it. You got to have the plus or minus in there. All right, let's do uh, one more of these, and then we'll get into the next uh, thing here. Four x squared minus one is equal to twenty-four. <coughs> Add one, right? 4x squared is equal to 25. Divide by 4. But does 25 divisible by 4? No. So we're going to leave it as that fraction. So the squared part's by itself. we got a fraction over here. So we take the square root of both sides. And what's that end up being? 5 over 2, plus or minus in front. Doesn't really complicate it that much uh, when the, you know when they're nice square numbers like that. All right. Next problem: x squared is equal to negative nine. That looks innocent. It looks easy. Why would I give you one that easy at this point in the lesson? <clears throat> ah, the negative on there is a the problem, right? So there's nothing squared or no real number squared that gets us negative 9 when you square it, right? Because when you square any, any regular number, you should be getting back a positive, right? Negative 4 squared is positive 16. Negative 3 squared is positive 9, not negative 9. So here is where we've got to learn the next thing. So this, this we're going to come back to this. Okay, We're going to do 16 in just a minute after we learn the complex number stuff. Okay. So complex numbers. Another name for that is imaginary. <coughs> All right. Complex number system, or the imaginary numbers that we're going to deal with when we're solving these uh, things by square roots or working with complex numbers. Uh, it was a bad naming accident in history of math. These guys, they knew that when they solved a uh, quadratic, they should get two answers, but then they ran into problems like that. X squared is equal to negative nine, and they knew they couldn't take a square root of a negative number at the time. So they would say, I know there's two solutions to these. We'll say that's two imaginary solutions because I, we can't find them. We don't have the skill to do that. So over the course of history, they uh, they kept calling them imaginary solutions. When they got the higher degree polynomial, so they did the same thing. But... Uh, so the name kind of stuck. So it's kind of like when Adam named it a cow, that name stuck. And I don't know why. It'd be funny if we called them dogs and they were things, you, dog milk, you know, you drink. That's weird, isn't it? But the name stuck, okay? So imaginary numbers is just an unfortunate uh, naming uh, problem in that over the course of time, we've developed the complex number system. And the complex number system uh, is ba using the imaginary numbers in combination with real numbers. By definition, this is the basis of the imaginary numbers and the complex number system. If we take the square root of negative one, that is I, lowercase i is the placeholder for that, okay? It really makes this, this is really not that hard. Uh, first block thought this was one of the easier parts, okay? Now, a complex number has a standard form. 
A plus B I. So that's that's standard form. So when we get to complex numbers and doing some operations with them in a little bit, that's important to know. But the big thing right now is that if we take the square root of a negative one, it turns into an I. Okay, so let's go back to our problem, number 16. X squared is equal to negative nine. If that were a positive nine, I would just take the square root of each side, right? Do the same thing with the negative. Put the plus or minus in front of it, still there. Because that's a negative, I automatically bring an I out. And then I think, okay, if the I takes care of the negative sign, what's the square root of just nine? Three. So the answer is plus or minus three I. If it's a negative, there's going to be an I on the outside of the radical. There's nothing left on the inside of the radical for this because it was a square number. Okay. If there's a negative underneath the radical, I'm going to pull an I out. Say, for example, x squared plus 81, if that's equal to zero. We're going to solve that. Uh, what do we know about this from what we've done before? It's almost a what? It's almost a difference of squares. What's the only thing it's missing? The minus sign in the middle. It's a sum of squares, which we know sums of squares what? Do not what? They don't factor. Yeah, they don't work. They don't factor, okay? So you can't do that. So this is where you've got to be able to solve by square roots to solve this problem. So to solve by square roots, you'd subtract 81. And then you'd take the square root of each side. What's the square root of 81? 9. And because it was negative, what else comes with it? An I. So that doesn't really complicate it that much, does it? Makes it pretty easy. It's still just as easy. Let's do one that's a little tougher. 4x squared plus 15 equals negative 9. All right, subtract 15, 4x squared is equal to negative 24, divide by 4, x squared is equal to negative 6, Uh, so take square root of both sides, plus or minus, and then what's the only thing that comes out on the other side? Comes out to the outside of the radical. An I, because if you do the factor tree for six, it's just three and two. There are no pairs or sets of two, right? So if no, there are no sets of two, then everything goes back inside and just multiplies back together. So this is I radical six as a solution. 2x squared plus 26 equal to 2. Subtract 26, right? 2x squared is equal to negative 24. Divide by 2. Negative 12. Now what? Take the square roots. So I'm just going to break down the 12. That's 4 times 3. 2 and 2. So there's a 2 in front. What else is in front? An I. And then the square root of 3. The I, you want to put it out in front the radical because if you put it after the radical it looks like it's inside of it so it's just common practice to put it out here with the number that goes on the front okay not super complicated stuff the i just 
uh, takes care of the negative signs for us. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's talk about using just complex numbers, and then we're going to do some operations uh, with complex numbers and things. So uh, this is a chart that you need to remember or memorize. We already know that I is equal to the square root of negative 1. I squared is equal to negative 1. I cubed. You done? All right. I cubed is negative I, and I to the fourth is positive 1. Memorize that. Got to know it, okay? It's going to be the key to being able to do this. Probably saw some problems like this on benchmark yesterday. Some stuff with eyes in it. I had to give you the test yesterday. <laughs> yeah. All right. You saw them. Probably didn't know how to, you know, work them. Uh, but nice, easy stuff, actually. Um, so memorize that <coughs> chart. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to simplify. Something like I to the 15th. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really a, a really easy thing to do. Okay, now, anytime you have I raised to a power, it's really the square root of negative 1 raised to that power. It's what, what it stands for. Okay, so I'm going to show you the shorthand way of simplifying that. And it just takes long division from back when you were in elementary school. So we're going to take the exponent and we're going to divide it by 4. Okay. When you divide something by four, what are the possible remainders that there could be? Let's think, okay, if I divide it by four and it goes evenly, what's the remainder? Zero, okay? If I take a number like uh, 13, divide it by four, what's the remainder? One, okay? So we have zero and one so far. It could also be a remainder of what? Two or three. Could there be a remainder of four? No, because if it's a remainder of four, it means it should have went into it another time, right? So you have four possible remainders. Zero, one, two, and three. <laughs> if the remainder is zero, then it's the same thing as out of the fourth power. If the remainder is one, it's the same thing as I, technically out of the first power, right? If it's the remainder of two... It's the same thing as I squared, which is negative 1. If it's a remainder of 3, then it's the same thing as I cubed, which is negative I. So when we simplify this kind of thing, we should be getting one of these answers. Okay, either I, negative 1, negative I, or positive 1. So if I take 15 and I, old school division, 4 goes into 15 how many times? 3 times. So 3 times 4 is 12. I subtract that, and I get a remainder of 3. The remainder is the thing that tells me where to go. The remainder is 3, so that means it's like I cubed, which is negative I. So that's what that simplifies down to be. Okay? Do another one. I to the 62nd power. 62 divided by 4. It goes one time. That's 4. 22 goes five times. It's 20. Remainder of 2. The remainder is the only part that matters. So that means it's like what? Or I squared, which is equal to negative one so that's what that simplifies down to be yes because out of the fourth power turns into positive one so that's the most if you go to out of the fifth power it starts over out of the sixth power is like i squared so I, we're going to divide by four because that's the most that we can take out of the time okay that, so that good question all right well the question or are you just stretching all right, good. 22. Uh, let's take uh, I to the 107th power. Knock that out. 
So 107 divided by 4 plus 6 times. Remainder is 3. So the remainder is 3. It's like what? Negative I. It's I cubed, right? It's negative I. If the remainder is 0, what's the answer? One. Okay. So simplifying out powers of I. Okay. Let's start adding in a little bit uh, more math involved. 4i times 7i. So multiplying strictly imaginary numbers here and then simplifying. If those were x's, that's pretty easy, right? If it was 4x times 7x, it would be what? Yeah, you would. If it was four x times seven x, you'd get twenty eight x squared. I acts like a variable, but it, it we know it means something else. So this would be twenty eight i squared. But then what do I know about i squared? It equals negative one. So this is really twenty eight times negative one, which is negative twenty eight. So we can simplify down a little further because I has some meaning. Where x, if it were x, x didn't, we didn't know what x was, but we know what i is. So we can simplify a little further out of that. So that's a nice thing. Negative 4i times positive 2i times 9i. Multiply 3 imaginary numbers together. So I times I times I would be I to the third. And then four negative four times positive two times positive nine. Negative seventy-two. And now we need to simplify the I part a little further. I cubed turns into Negative I. So we have negative 72 times negative I. Negative times negative is a positive 72 I. Okay. What letter are we on? Or number 25. 25. 2I raised to the third. Times five i. <coughs> so if I cube something, two i to, times two i times two i would be eight i to the third times five i. The order of operation says do those exponents first, right? And then, well, two times two times two, not two times three. So that's eight. And eight times five would be 40i to the fourth power, but we know i to the fourth power is really just one, so one times 40 is 40, and we're done. All right, this one looks a little tougher because it's not written with the I's on it. So what we want to do is uh, take care of the negatives on the inside of the square roots first. I advise, you can go ahead and simplify square root 18 if you want to. I'm not going to because I'm going to have to simplify at the end anyway. I'm just going to take care of the I part first. So these actually come out to be I radical 18. times i radical 10, right? So just take the negative part out. And then the rules for multiplying radicals together is what? Remember that? Inside times inside, outside times outside. So outside times outside be i times i, which is i squared, that's easy. Inside times inside would be square root of 180. And then I need to break that down. 
So simplifying the square root of 180. 90 times 2. And then 90 is 45. And 2. That's 9 and 5. 3 and 3. So I got a pair of 3s, a pair of 2s, and a 5. So that'd be 6 radical 5. And then the I squared actually turns into what? Negative 1. So that'd be negative 6, wouldn't it? Because I squared is, is the same thing as negative 1. Right. And then breaking down the, the 180 is the same as what we've done before. No, because because the square root was already in the problem. Plus or minus is only when you're solving and you put the square root in yourself. If the square root's already already there, you don't have to do that. Okay. Um, let's do some complex numbers here. All right. Remember, a complex number has this form: a plus b i. The real, the regular number is always in the front. The complex is already always in the back, or the imaginary parts in the back. Okay. Make sure that it's in that order. Okay. All right, so what that number are we on here? 27. Negative 11 plus 3i plus 9 plus 2i. Same story as it was with the multiplication. If those were x's, what would you put together? Like terms. They are still like terms here with i's on them. Okay, so negative 11 plus 9 would be... Negative 2, 3i plus 2i would be 5i. There's no power on the i, so I don't have to do any simplifying with it on this one. Okay, Always looking to see if we can simplify further. That's as far as you can go on that one. Like terms, that's all it is. 7 minus 2i minus 2 plus 6i. Subtraction. Like terms, right? It's the same. 7 minus 2 would be 5. Negative 2i minus 6i would be, try again, minus 8i. Because it's a minus sign in the middle. You have a complex number minus another complex number. It's like that minus sign distributes kind of what happens when you're subtracting each piece. So 5 minus 8i. So there's addition, there's subtraction. Let's do multiplication. 2i, 8 minus 3i. What property is that? Distributive. It's the same story. So I multiply 2i times 8 would be 16i. 2i times negative 3i would be negative 6i squared. And there comes an exponent on the i. So we got to do that simplifying again with that. So i squared turns into negative 1. So we have negative 6 times negative 1, which is 6. And then that's a positive 16i. And yes, I want it in that order. Because that's standard form for a complex number. Real number part first, imaginary number part second. Needs to be in that order. Okay. Let's say we had 7 plus i times 4 minus 2i. If those were x's, this would be just multiplying out two binomials like we've done before. The same rule, it's just distributive property twice. So I'm going to distribute 7 to 4, 28, 7 to the negative 2i, negative 14i, and then distribute the i. Be plus 4i minus 2i squared. Then we're simplifying. We know i squared turns into what? Negative 1. So that ends up being 
28. And then negative 2 times negative 1 would be positive 2, right? So we have 28 plus 2, which is 30. And then we have negative 14i plus positive 4i, which would be negative 10i. Boom. I'll show you a trick with the calculator. Everybody grab a calculator. Get it turned on. <clears throat> show you this. And we'll do division. We'll be done. All right. Hit the mode button on your calculator, which is right up there by the blue second button. Hit mode. Look for the line that has real A plus B I and then this R E to the theta I. Look for that line on your mode and then change it to where the highlighted one is A plus B I. So scroll down through your menu there, hit mode, and then go there and make sure it's on A plus B I. And that'll allow your calculator to do some stuff with, with complex numbers. Okay? Everybody there? You got an 84 or 83. I'm not sure that it'll, it, it may not do this. Okay? Uh, I can't remember. It's been a while since I used 80. All right, so with the calculator, <laughs> we can actually do uh, number 30 there. If I do parentheses, 7 plus, what was it, I, to get the I, I hit second and then a decimal point. It'll put the I there. Close the parentheses, open up another set, and then 4 minus 2I. So 4 minus 2, and to get the I again, I hit second decimal point. Second decimal point. Hit in. That's nice. Problem is, is you got to be able to do it by hand too. Okay. I usually don't do multiplication with the calculator uh, or addition or subtraction because it's just too easy to do the lock term. It takes me longer to type it in than it would do work. Okay. But you can check it with that. Okay. It'll do the addition subtraction the same way with the I's in there. And it will actually simplify out the I squared and things for you. If you put uh, I to the 16th power or I to the 14th power, or we did I to the 15th, it'll simplify that out to be negative I for you. I mean, it, it can do that stuff. I want you to be able to do it with or without the calculator because you know there were some of those problems on the non-calculator portion and then there were some on the calculator portion as well. The caret symbol over here to the right, so you get the I, and then the caret symbol's right above the vision. It looks like a little house top, and it'll, and then you can type in whatever exponent you need. So if I did 23, if it gives you a thing with uh, like, yeah, that stuff, that uh, that's a rounding error in the algorithm that used to do this because it's really, you know, not the greatest way of getting there. It uses an algorithm to do that. They haven't put out an update for the, the 84 pluses uh, for that yet. The color versions, they did update, but it's, it's like iPhone 11 compared to iPhone 4. So that one can't handle the same stuff that the color one does. So uh, it, it, we run into an issue with that. So that's another reason to know how to do it. Uh, and it's just division by four. So that part can work out there. So um, let's look at division real quick. Or our football guys got to go. Uh, division let's start with this problem it's 10 over the square root of 2 if I handed you a piece of paper and I said take this piece of paper and cut it into two pieces could you do it? that's pretty easy right if I hand you the same piece of paper and say cut it into square root of two pieces can you do that huh with anybody, right? Impossible. So that's not rational, right? You think about the idea of rational numbers and irrational numbers. Uh, rational numbers can be written as fractions. It makes good sense that you can cut a piece of paper into two pieces, but cutting it into square root of two pieces is not a good thing, all right? So we've got to get rid of the square root that's in the denominator, and you rationalize the denominator to do that. So whatever the problem part is in the bottom, that's what you multiply by. So this will give us 10 square root of 2 on top and square root of 4 on the bottom, which we know the square root of 4 is 2. So we get 10 radical 2 over 2. 
Those two numbers are both divisible by two, so it simplifies out. Decimal-wise, 10 over square root of 2 is the same thing as 5 radical 2. If you did them in the calculator, it, it would give you the same decimal, but the look of them is much different. When we do a complex number, it's the same idea. So I have no idea what number we're on now. 31 and 32. Yeah, 31. This is 32. 10 over I, <laughs> if I told you to cut a piece of paper into I pieces, what's that mean? Doesn't mean anything, right? So we need to fix that. The problem is the I part. So we multiply by I over I. So that's going to be 10I over I squared. But we know I squared is negative 1. So 10I divided by negative 1 would be negative 10I. Four over negative nine i. Can you divide something by negative? Excuse me, by negative nine. Yeah, you can divide by negative nine. Dividing by i is a problem. So the i part's the part we need to change. The nine, really, we don't have to do anything with because it's not really causing any problems. So we multiply by i over i again. So that's four i over negative 9 i squared, which we know i squared is negative 1. So that changes it to positive 9. So it puts the i on top and changes the sign. Where it gets a little tougher is one like this. Negative 2 over 5 minus i. That's a complex number in the bottom. It's had a real part and an imaginary part. What you have to use there is what's called a, con a conjugate. The conjugate changes the sign in the middle. So if what was in the denominator had a minus sign in the middle, the conjugate has a plus sign. If this were a plus sign down here, the conjugate would have a minus sign. Okay? So 5 minus i. All right? Now, or excuse me, 5 minus i has a conjugate of 5 plus i. And then look at the factors. This is 5 minus i, this is 5 plus i. That looks like the factors of a difference of squares. That's the last example. Can you hang with me for just a minute? Uh, if we multiply that out, it's going to get rid of the i's. On the top, negative 2 distributes. So that's negative 10 minus 2i. On the bottom, we got 5 times 5, 25. And then it's minus i squared because the middle terms cancel out. Remember, difference of squares, that's what it does. But we know i squared is really what? Negative 1. So we have 25 minus negative 1. And so it ends up being 25 plus 1, which is 26, right? Negative 10 minus 2i over 26. What do we know about all of those numbers? All divisible by 2. So divide them all by 2. That's part of simplifying a fraction. And we've simplified it to that. If you did this on your calculator, I would type it in negative 2 divided by, and then I need to put the parentheses, 5 minus i. 5 minus i. It looks ugly. So I'm going to hit math, enter, enter. Is that the same thing as what I got? What's the, what they do to it? Separated it with the denominator there. The 13 was on the bottom of mine. They put 13 under each one of those. That's the only difference. So you can check yourself on the division ones using the, the calculator. All right. Do you have to change your calculator back to the No, you, it shouldn't affect it in anything else you do. Just leave it in that mode forever. The way I would do it. All right, football guys. Come, come grab you. Merch before you leave. Everybody else, I'll pass that. I'm stacking up here. I got three pieces of space. They're all there. Three pieces of space, three pieces of space. So make sure you got a homework of three, four, and five. That's what you should be leaving here with. 
This is not due until after you get back from fall break. Okay, so the idea is that I was doing all of this so that if you are going on a trip for fall break, you got everything you need to get you through and ready to come back on Monday. Any other football guys that got some stuff? Monday, Tuesday, we work. Yeah, the workouts are good. Jewel is in session Monday. As far as I know, attendance can't. I'll be here. I probably will be. Twenty bucks is still won't get it done. <laughs> Well, hey, check see if they're up there. They still on the board. All right, last one. All right, so you should have homeworks three, four, and five in hand. That those are the things that we're doing. Again, it's going to be work days on uh, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, so if you've got your family has plans uh, or you just want to use a couple of your five days, uh, go for it. I wouldn't be